Hello everyone and welcome back to another Journey to Med vlog. In our vlogs you guys always see us studying. So today I'm going to show you what that actually consists of. You're basically wasting your time. I don't want to burn out and I don't want to hate my life. If you need help just ask for it, it's not going to kill you. Let's get into it. Good morning everyone, as you can see I woke up in a bit of a state but I quickly had a shower, fixed how I looked and then made my way to the kitchen to have some breakfast. Good morning everyone, good morning, I am back with another vlog but as you guys heard in the trailer today's vlog is going to be a bit different. Since we've started medical school we've got lots of different questions like how do you guys study at medical school and what exactly do you do to prepare for your exams and if you guys ask we will deliver so I'll be giving you guys all that juicy information later on today but for now I need to make breakfast. This girl always has the same breakfast. Why is there a random rose on the table? Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on either. But as soon as I finished eating, I went upstairs, packed my bags, put on my jacket and made my way to pick up Liddy. And when I did, she said this. <laughs> they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just I go through this. No, morning. she chats so much last in the morning, man. Daily basis. Oh, give me the camera, you're gonna break it! After we were done fighting for the camera, we made our way to Mile End and then walked to our campus. Of course I had to stop at Costa and get myself a cheeky frappuccino. After Liddy modelled my drink for me, we were finally able to make it into the study room. Let's get a little old... I don't know what he's called. What do you think the skeleton is called? Bob. Bob. Let's get Bob the skeleton in shot. There we go. You can't see Bob's head because he's a bit too tall, but you can see his body and that will do. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys exactly how I study with my iPad and my laptop. Let's get into it. Before I even start, disclaimer, disclaimer, I'm not saying my revision method is the best in the world. I'm not saying if you use mine, you're going to get the best grades in the world, but this is simply what works for me. But with that being said, let's get on to the actual video. So step one of the ultimate revision study routine is planning. If you guys don't plan your revision effectively, you can't be upset if it doesn't go well. Now that might be harsh, but planning my revision and planning my studying has honestly helped me so, so much. So I want you guys to most definitely implement that into your own routine. We've said this a couple of times on this channel, but we always use our Sunday evenings to plan our work for the upcoming week. And for each day, we'll plan exactly what we're going to be doing, whether that be a lecture, a PBL, just so that when it comes to that day, we know what we're doing in the morning. Obviously my study routine has changed a bit because of online learning, but in a general week, I plan to do what I've been set out by the university I don't do extra revision, I don't go out of my way to do 11 hours in the library, I simply do what I've been set to do. Of course when it comes to exam season I will do that intense learning however I don't do that throughout the term because I don't want to burn out and I don't want to hate my life so I leave that intense preparation for exam season. Something that I recommend that everyone does is also timetable in catch-up boxes. I always put in catch-up time for example on the weekend or on like a Wednesday evening just because I know things can go wrong, I know a lecture can take longer than I wanted it to take therefore I give myself catch-up boxes so that if I didn't complete any of that work I could do it in that time but the most important thing when planning your study timetable is to be realistic and be self-disciplined if you give yourself a block of two hours to complete a lecture use those two hours to actually complete the lecture but then yet again if you know a lecture is going to take you three hours don't give yourself one hour or two hours to do it because at the end of the day you're just going to upset yourself and you're going to be sad that you didn't finish your work so be realistic with your timetabling and also be self-disciplined. Quick drink break. Now let's get on to actually making our notes. So as you guys have probably seen, I use my iPad to make all my notes. I didn't always use an iPad. I used to type my notes and I also used to write, handwrite my notes on paper sometimes, but using an iPad has been the best thing for me and my way of learning. But like I said, it might not be yours. It's mine, might not be yours. Don't go buy an iPad because I said so. And I, oh. 
um, but I did make a very in-depth video on exactly how I make my notes I'll link it up there make sure you go watch that after this video but just for a rough summary I'll have my lecture up on my laptop and then on my iPad I'll have one side with the PowerPoint one side with Notability which is the app that I used to make my notes on and then I'll just go through the recording and make my notes for the lecture however it is important to also note that different topics or different modules might require you to make notes in different types of ways for example for my anatomy physiology and histology sessions I prefer to just make my notes on the actual PowerPoint slides rather than on a separate piece of paper but like I said for my lectures I prefer to make the notes on a separate page where I can summarize the content on the PowerPoint and then for my PBLs I actually prefer to type up my notes on my laptop so be flexible and be adaptable to what you need obviously sometimes my lectures aren't enough and I'll need extra help so I'll go to maybe YouTube or other websites like Ken Hub to better my understanding and clear up any confusions I may have now this is all easy to say but we all know I know it you know it sometimes it's really hard to be motivated to actually do the work you've set out to do something that really helps me is having an accountability partner for example I've realized that when I study with Liddy I'm automatically more productive because she's there to make sure I'm on track and I'm there to make sure she's on track but sometimes it isn't always possible to work with a friend especially now when most of us have to work remotely so something that can really really help you with this is an amazing website called Binder who have kindly sponsored today's video. Binder is a website where you can study together with other students. It helps you work with others, which will help you remain motivated. I love that it's like a library, but virtual. During sessions, you can also ask questions and help each other out. Honestly guys, with registration being so easy, there is no excuse not to use Binder. As you can see, once you log in, you have the option to join many different study sessions. And as they each have a short description, you can join the one you like the sound of. It is so easy to join a study session. You literally press join session, add your name, and then you'll be in a room with other students. Here is the chat function that you can use to say hi or even ask a question. This helps you meet like-minded students that you can study with. Some study sessions are scheduled for later on, so you can sign up to them and then join them later. It is also very easy to set up your own study session. Simply press schedule session and fill in a few details just like I am doing here. Lydia and I will actually be doing this session on Binder, so make sure you join us on Friday the 5th of February from 11am to 1pm so we can study together and mash some work. If you guys like the sound of Binder, make sure to check the link in the description to register. Okay. So that's pretty much it for the note making section. Now let's get on to revision. When it's exam season, I obviously need to work more intensely and my revision period mostly consists of me going through my notes that I have already made, plus me doing a lot of practice questions. I tend to briefly go over all the different notes I have made throughout the module and if I find something that I don't understand or that's just not clicking in my brain, I'll stop looking to it further and make sure I understand it. I also prioritize more important lectures or topics that just keep coming up again and again and again because I don't have enough time to go over every single little detail in every single little lecture, so I do need to prioritize. When going through my lectures, if there's something that I wanna make sure I remember, it might be like a key number or like key information I make sure to write it on a specific piece of paper and I try and make it as memorable as possible for example I might come up with a mnemonic I might link it to like an image just to help me remember it in the exam by writing down the things that I'm struggling to remember this also helps me identify weak points in my knowledge that I can then look into further now I would say this is actually the most important part when it comes to revising do lots of practice questions not doing practice questions for an exam is like not practicing driving a car for your driving test. It doesn't make sense. So I'll do quizzes online, for example, on websites like KenHub, Osmosis, Spotomed, Quizlet. And on top of that, I'll also go through resources that my university has given me. Something that is essential to my way of learning is that every time I get a question wrong, I'll screenshot it and put it in a specific folder on my laptop. Before my exam, I make sure to go through every single one of these questions and figure out why I was wrong and then also figure out why the answer that is right is right. There have been so many times where I've got a question wrong, I've screenshotted it, I've gone over it, and then it came up in the exam literally the week after. So honestly, this is so, so important. I highly recommend it. Now let's get on to some top tips. We have literally received like hundreds of messages and comments of people asking us, how many hours should I revise for? How many hours did you revise for? 
And to be honest, it doesn't matter. It's not about how long you spend studying or revising. It's about if you're actually taking in that knowledge and actually understanding what you're looking at. So I can literally study for 11 hours every single day of the week and still not get the grades I want to get because if I'm not studying effectively and efficiently, it means nothing. I know it's an easy habit to fall into, but sometimes we just sit through our lectures, don't really listen, we just make notes without paying attention, but that's not benefiting you at all. And although it's a hard pill to swallow, you're basically wasting your time. So I strongly, strongly suggest that even if you're only going to do like three hours of work a day, make sure that those three hours are active learning. You are actually taking in every single thing you are looking at. My next top tip would be try different study methods until you find the one that works for you. Not the one that works for me or for Liddy or for your friend, the one that works for you. Don't be pressured to fall into the trap of copying other people's study methods because what works for them may not work for you. For example, I thought using Anki was for me, I was wrong. I thought typing up my lecture notes was for me. I was wrong. However, then I discovered using an iPad and handwriting my notes and I was finally satisfied with my way of learning. So just keep trying other methods until you find your own. And finally, ask for help. I know as medical students, we can be like, oh, we want to be all independent because we know how to do everything and we don't need help. You're wrong. If you need help, just ask for it. It's not going to kill you. For example, in university, older students can be really helpful. So you might know one from a sports team or you might just be in a group chat with older students. Ask them for help. Or sometimes it's easier to also ask your lecturers, just send them an email and I'm sure they'll all be more than willing to help. Okay, cool. So I have rambled for a very, very long time. Even Bob here is tired. But I hope you guys have all enjoyed this video and you have found it even a bit informative. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up this vlog here. I know this was a bit weird because the start was more vloggy and then I did more of a sit down type of video. Just thought I'd try something new. If you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in a new video next week. Bye!